So guys, so Jefferson here. Welcome to Alivio Health 222 LLC. And uh, so this is kind of, you know, if, uh, if, I, if I ever do or, you know, I'm pretty sure it is. It's gonna be like, like a backstory edition. Now, this is where I, where I when I where I started. All of those who had a dream to pursue an endeavor for their future, I'm here to tell you it's possible. Like this is that type of video where I like, I put this in the in the intro when you're like an employee or something like the intro of a like Walmart. You know how you have that onboarding. You have this is the onboarding video. Hey guys, so. Jefferson here and do you guys have a dream do you guys guys have an idea a passion a purpose a feeling to reach your life goal and I'm here to tell you that yeah it's possible it's not gonna be easy though the reason it's not easy is in order for you to appreciate once it does become easy. Say like when you get sick. Right now, since we're in good health, we don't really give thanks for being healthy because that's our norm. Like, oh, dude, we like we should already feel healthy because you know you made us or whatever. You know, so we're mostly we feel obligated. Our body should feel great. And when we get sick, oh my gosh. <laughs> I wish, you know, we start complaining. We start, oh God, no. If I, if I'm better, I'm gonna go to church more often. You don't, you don't. And here we are. Okay, so I'm probably gonna post this on YouTube. So this is like the storage unit that I'm thinking of. Um, start making uh just. Well, it's mostly for ideas, you know, I'm very uh, idea guy, orientation, like that, and, um, like, I can't, I, oh, there's this thing from Think and Grow Rich, and Napoleon Hill talks about how many of the robber barons and businesses of industry in the 1900s, in that book, it states many of those entrepreneurs, businesses, f philosophers, many people with great minds, they tend to have an hour for themselves. Just for whatever whatever you think you should be doing that hour. For example, me, th this is more of a, a project planning area. You know, it's like I'm working on myself and I think everybody should do this. Even if you're in a good standing point, imagine if you're already a supervisor, I think this would also be needed because when it comes to responsibility and commitment, it falls in mental toughness, that falls under the category in a successful anything. What do you mean successful anything? In order for you to be successful in anything, there's one crucial, one crucial, and I'm not saying this, I could be wrong about this. I'm going based on what Grant Cordon says. Who is Grant Cordon? You guys, if you guys don't know who Grant Cordon, you guys should go and take a look who he is. Grant Cordon is a top seller. His tongue makes money. Think about that. You speaking, him using words gets him $100,000 deals, million dollar deals. Celine Dion, Celine Dion sings, though I'm going off topic. Ranker Don't states that the biggest important sacrifice is for you to commit in whatever you're gonna do. If you're gonna do construction, then you're committed to do construction. There's no part-time, there's no part-time that. If you're gonna be a leader, someone who guides people, there's no, Harriet Tubman states that 
in her biographies or whatever they talk about her, uh, Harriet Tubman was a really tough leader. She was a leader because there was times where she was in the Underground Railroad in the halfway point, and many of the slaves were thinking about quitting. They were thinking about, no, you know what, we should just go back. And this is what makes Harriet Tubman a great leader. She put a gun to the slave's face and then says, you're either a free man or a dead man. And that brings fear to any anybody. Are you, in this endeavor, in this journey you're gonna make in your life, whatever it might be, if it's a new endeavor and new purpose, the most important part is that you have to commit. It's either live on your feet or die. And this is, and this is what she prided herself in. She said that she never lost anybody in all the journeys she made. And it was because of that, her commitment to be free. And that's like, dude, I'd rather be free. Same thing goes in my situation. I'd rather be free financially, free spiritually, free health-wise, than live my life making excuses blaming others and criticizing you know one of the times that my supervisor really showed me from uh jocko williams and it's uh you got to take extreme ownership in regards to stuff no one's really the government especially the government those who fucking i'm, I'm yeah i'm like shit man i'm turning republican oh shit no uh, many people many people I hate that word um i don't know where i don't even know where i was going let me take a sip of my water Basically, the moral of the story is, what are you willing to sacrifice and are you going to commit to pursuing your life? Pursuing, maybe that's what, how I'm going to end it. Pursue your life because no one's going to give it to you. You gotta, gotta go out for it. What did Kendrick say? I'm willing to die for this shit. I've done cry for this shit. Yeah. This dude committed his life towards it. And you gotta do the same. Even if it's the wrong option. Because the more you commit and the more you go towards that path, the faster you're gonna realize, you know what, this isn't actually for me. And you're gonna try something else. Save some time committing. You're gonna fail a couple times. That's that's the whole beauty of it. The crazy part is that I bought this fucking this this shit. Let me stop but fuck dude. I don't know where my, the easel thing, so this is like for like the whiteboard. So I want to start fucking sh you and show you and, and show that if you're willing to commit you're gonna win or something like that I should make a quote if you commit you be lit <laughs> if those who commit reap their fruit I don't know those who commit if you commit, you win. Some shit like that, right? I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound too Caucasian either, because it's, like, it's like, bro, like, are you are you trying to be Caucasian or something? I'm not. But I do like that though. Like, the feeling of idea of white privilege. Imagine getting on a traffic ticket because they think you're white. I take it. Fuck it. Sheesh. Thank you, sir. 
Oh, okay, so, well, this is kind of like step one. Like, welcome along my journey. So, the cool part is that, here, I started doing, um, wait, so yeah, this, um, so this company, not company, it's an LLC, and so this, so, let me tell you a little bit of myself, so I'm a, and I like saying this, I'm a, Mexican-American. I'm a Mexican-American. So what does that mean? That means that, yeah, I'm an American. I'm an American. I'm going to fight for my country. And I'm also Mexican. My roots, my blood, who I am is Mexican. It's like, oh, you have a Ford F-150 Ranger? built in mexico like that that's where i'm trying to like try to say that like yeah i was built here but like my like i am mexican like my nationality is american like i'm not gonna go to i'm not gonna if like if a war fights between mexico and america i'm america all the way like fuck that like hello sir gomez i don't know <laughs> like i'm i'm gonna stick because you know they fucked up japan for no reason, bro. They just blew up. Japan just bombarded Pearl Harbor. And then the fucking president's like, yeah, they just dropped two nuclear weapons. I'm like, what? Sir, sir, they just attacked a couple planes, a couple ships, a couple people died. We're going to bomb half their fucking continent? Like, shh. What if we, what if we just attack them? No, bombs? Fuck yeah. That's the great thing about America, though. The great thing about America is the ability for them. So, this is where I'm going at, guys. Go from, right now, most of us are employees or private contractors. Self-employees, 1099 workers, or W-2 workers, I mean, it's not the way to be. So you sh I, I mean, like when you're first starting off, well, yeah, you're going to have to do that because unless you have good guidance at a young age, you, you're you not really just going to start a company or start an LLC because for my example, I knew that I had to start a business. I just didn't know the steps to take. I knew I had to do this, though I didn't know where to find it because we just talk about it. So we know the information. Information is only half the battle action is the second part of it and most people stay stuck in the planning stage So most people get stuck in the planning stage and it's good for a time because same thing again Grant Cardone one of the things Grant Cardone teaches not only to commit to your work is to be organized and when I and that also includes in planning like strategizing you always got to be strategizing Tony Robbins talks about allocation money allocation which is meaning just strategizing how to use your money and then that's why i got this whiteboard i got this whiteboard because so i gotta put my ideas oh, i should brought my fucking thing but here i think i couldn't do it somehow like this like in the back of my car like i just got to post something like here like it should be right here yeah i could do it like this like it like look, look, look i have a tripod but i left it at the house so so what is this i know this is gonna be a long ass fucking video but this is most like the intro this is like just like video vlogging though so, so great thing about america is that you can start as an employee and i i was one of these people who i was one of these associates who always got upset in uh and the way the government took my money, Medicare, taxes, and all that good shit. And I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I'm paying for 
all these you know, welfare and other Medicare type stuff, and, and I'm not getting to contribute from that. I was really upset about that because it's like, bro, I'm fucking working hard for other people. I don't even, and they get 200 out for a middle. I mean, I don't even know if I'm middle class. I don't know what the fuck I am. But for someone who lives in a society, fuck. Let me see if this can hold right here. If it holds up, we're good, guys. Oh my father. Look at this. Okay. Cool. Alright. Bam. Look at oh, I guess it didn't work. Um shit. I don't really know what to do in this situation. Here I gotta fucking improvise. Bam. Oh that's okay. Oh I can do it like this. Okay, cool. So, what's the reason I'm do like? What's the reason I'm making this video, anyways? Okay, first step. So, who am I? I already mentioned. I'm building a brand, so that's one thing. And what does this brand consist of? And then let's look at other famous brands. For example, you got Carhartt. Carhartt is known for working with the trades folks. We are we know that they are meant for tough jobs, manual labor, and the material they are made of is really durable. I love Carhartt because I wear. I also wear dickies and I also wear other work-related clothes. I work at a warehouse, and uh, I've noticed that out of Lee's, I haven't tried Wranglers. Not really a Wrangler sounds just like a Wrangler. Oh, I, and I just like. Oh, what are you wearing? Wranglers. Like I can't really feel good wearing it and thinking I'm gonna say that. And then I tried uh, Lee's, I've tried Carhartt, and I've tried Dickies, Dickies pants. Just recently, one of my Dickies pants ripped because the way I work, I'm telling you, like when it comes to warehouses, you can't like, it's still an industrial job. When it comes to a warehouse, it's an industrial job. And many people don't know that. They come in there with fucking Yeezys. I'm like, bro, fucking Yeezys till you don't work. If you come into work with Yeezys, you ain't working, my dude. Unless you're just fucking those up. But even if you're fucking those up, tactically, Yeezys aren't good for working. Unless you're like in an office job, but you're fucking working right next to me. Unloading this fucking trailer, my guy. You don't need to fucking wear $500 shoes here. That's how much you make in a fucking week. So chill. Get some... Get, go get your fucking work boots go get your steel toes that the company offers you for free and where are those motherfuckers so we know that carhartt it's like really good material so we know that so the brand that i'm trying to build are based on a couple niches it's not a niche it's just a health kind of niche like spirit because like health comes in many different forms mental physical spiritually environmental emotional and those are really what i want to target in this type of brand because when you see dickies when you see carhartt when you see levi's when you see a certain brand when you see gucci armani prada like you know that those are specific brands meant for certain niches gucci ferragamo louis vuitton saint laurent those are all very expensive products those are made for the supposedly rich even though the rich don't even fucking buy those shit like they don't even buy it like middle class people do it's like so you know when it comes to those brand, when it comes to that merchandise oof, you know it's trying to target a certain brand so who am i trying to target and that's a really good question you know so uh, one of the most important things is 
your health. And it's going to be comparted into four things. Health, well, so it's going to be health. So it's going to be a niche in health. Wealth. Oh, I forgot I need to charge my phone. I should about to die. Fuck. I might have to do it over there. Fucking good thing like this. Shit, I got my car. Fuck. So uh, once it dies, let me see how much battery I have. I have 16, so I'm good for now. It's crazy how even certain words get up. So, you got a more fucking, you got a more fucking, so brand. So, well, technically the brand's name is, uh, it's called the Alivio Health. Two, two, two. Because not only I want, do I want to focus on health, wealth, love, happiness. I also want to really focus on spirituality. And it's not, it's not really falls under religion. Like, yeah, you can... Like, spiritual and religiously, or, like, spiritual and religiously are, like, or religious are two different things. And the reason, and then, one thing, I, this is going to be a little foreshadowing. So, one of the really guys that really awoke me to my, like, purpose in life is um, the spirituality aspect. And this guy was Vision. His name is Vision something. I forget what it is. The book that he wrote was uh, The Code... And and then I think the code to an extraordinary mind. I'm not gonna write the whole fucking thing. And he talks about purpose and guidance and and really following your intuition and really knowing what is it that. Cause it's funny how every religion has a religion. Every fucking country, every race, every motherfucking conscious being on this planet and i say conscious being on this planet is following some type of religion and then and it's not really religion it's more of a belief system and that's a really key principle word i'm trying to use belief system because agnostics and atheists still falls into the belief system because they believe they believe when you believe you're forcing something into your consciousness is you accepting it in some part of your mind i say pineal gland others say pituitary gland we have to accept it it's like saying no like when you say no it's a whole body response you gotta eh, no i don't want to no and that's being defensive though when it comes to belief you have to like let it enter you. The Holy Spirit has to come inside you. And uh, even atheists, they have to believe, they have to force themselves that at the end of the day, we're going to die on the floor and just be buried, which I don't know if it's true or not. I doubt it. Like, like how boring would it be if that was it? That we just live our life and we die. Like, there's something else, and we know that because we feel that. We have a soul. We have some type of feeling that really makes us think. And that's a, one of the biggest attributes, abilities, many people are scared to do because we're trained to do that. We were trained not to think and just follow. Do what your parents say. Do what your teachers say. Do what this is, which they don't mean it in 
like to control you. They just mean it. Why? Because everybody is stuck. And I'm gonna be this fucking um this dude, but it's not we're stuck in um the rules of society. The rules of the government that was implemented on top. And these rules, these these government officials, they might not mean it to do it to us on purpose. It's just that we don't fucking know what to do, my guy. Like most of these people, like if given the chance, if given like a huge amount of money, most of them are just gonna do drugs and like fuck hookers and that's it. And then fucking maybe give some to their family just so they don't feel like shit. And that's it. Like there's there really no impact that many people know how like are gonna do. And then why? Because pleasure. We seek pleasure and move away from this comfort. And that's a key of spiritual health. Though coming back to where I'm going to, what does it leave you health? And then this is um unsweetened tea. So I'll leave you health. So I have other names under it. Cause uh, in America, when you can you can start an LLC. So why am I doing this? Okay, first one is the LLC part, a limited liability corporation. I'm not saying that this is gonna happen to me though. Usually, when you do get up there, and then some people, you know, if you're like a lot of girls, a lot of mostly girls, they like to do little little hobbies or little side hustles is what you call them. And uh, they they do focus on foods, for example. Some do cakes, some do candy. They post it on Instagram, and they sell food products on Insta. And then yeah, that's a business. You're creating income. Though the the reason I really push on this is because what happens if a Karen, let's say a Karen, this fucking this bitch looking for trouble, she already wants to cause wreck rat ruckus. She finds your business and then like, oh, food products. She kind of knows a little bit of certain things like laws or food production or food handling. And she sees your Instagram. She sees your Instagram fucking that candy up with no gloves. You're mixing the fucking Skittles. You're mixing the Gushers without any motherfucking gloves. And she looks at that. Oh, oh, food violation. Let me. And then if she's smart, which uh, if she's like a snake, but it's kind of. God is sending you a snake so you can wake the fuck up. Like, bro, you know you need to be doing this. Why aren't you doing this? Yeah, you're doing good, but I can take it all away right now. And this Karen orders some gushers from your company, your business, without an LLC. Guess what? She eats it. She's sick. All of a sudden, she's sick. She has diarrhea, blah, blah, blah. She makes a whole ruckus. She fucks up and cause a, and cause a lawyer. And guess what? The lawyer... Yeah, this company, and I'm pretty sure this happens a lot. Oh, this person, this, this, this happened. I was fucking, my pain and suffering, yada, yada, yada. And the lawyers are like, yeah, we got you, free money. You get a letter in the mail or they, you get a, a visit, like a, you get sued. Now your personal assets are up for grabs. Now this bitch wants to take your Camry. She's going to take your motherfucking Camry. You got to pay her out. And then you got to go to bankruptcy. And you're like, fuck. Like, fuck. Like, all I wanted to do was start my business. <laughs> and I got serious. And, and now, now you're back at square one. You're working at Amazon. You're like, what the fuck went wrong? Let me tell you what went wrong. First step is just start an LLC. Why? Because it separates you and your business entity. That's what it is. Your, your business and you are two different people, two different entities, and that's the best thing about it. So if someone sues you, you don't got shit on your company. It's just paper, ho. Like, it's only fucking, it's only been filed the way it's registered. So guess what? My company got zero dollars. So if you do try to sue me, you can't fuck, okay? Well, I'll just not do anything. Like, And you're protected. Like, bro, you're like, why wouldn't you do an LLC? Just in case. And it's not even that. Because if you have an LLC, now you're taxed differently. Why do the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer? Because the rich know how to manipulate the tax code. It doesn't matter how many times the government says they're going to do this and implement tax code on, on rich folk. It doesn't fucking matter because they they, they, separate, they separate themselves from their business and personal entity. They separate their personal income from their business income and they're not taxed personally. And guess what? And we're non-different. So that's why we start an LLC.
not only for that, for all the money that you're implemented into your business, everything that you're putting into your into your business is a tax return, is a tax advantage, is a tax refund. Meaning, anybody who, okay, let's say, let's say, okay, yeah, let's go back to that bakery fucking Gushers Candy Company. It's this candy company. Imagine you're still doing this candy company and you have an LLC and you have everything registered, you have your EIN, you have everything that falls under the LLC. All the money that you're gonna be investing into that company, every three months you're gonna be doing taxes. Every three months you're gonna be reporting to the IRS what is it that we're gonna make those three months? You're giving them, you give them an estimate, which is crazy. You just give them an estimate. It's like, oh, I'm not gonna make any money. Though these are gonna be my overhead, my expenses, and everything else. Now that they know that every expenses that you make is gonna be returned back to you because it's a business expense. This is a business expense. The tax code works differently around the LLC, which. In return, the IRS just gives your money back because it's not taxed in the beginning like an employee is taxed at the end with all the money left over. So if you have no money left over, they don't tax you. An employee gets taxed before you even get your fucking check. That's why you want to convert into an LLC. That's step one. And that's what I did. So I'm, I'm over here at LLC, so it's Alivio Help LLC. And there's a couple of things you gotta do. Business bank account, yada, yada, yada. You follow this process and boom, we're here. So, which goes back to what is the purpose of Alivio Health, okay? We're gonna focus on health. We're gonna focus on wealth, love, happiness, spirituality, And it's all for one thing only. And I fucking hate to say this. I hate this like, <laughs> and it's gonna be the, the reason we're doing all this is the reason we're doing all this is so we can become the best versions of ourselves like bro like what the fuck is that man it sounds it sounded nice but now everybody just fucking jerking around on it so you're gonna become no i okay i'm not gonna use that we're not gonna use that i'm not fucking gay we're gonna become who we're meant to be we're gonna become who we're meant to be I like that better because we're becoming who we're meant to be because you know you know who you are and you know what you want only you know what you want so since you know what you want you gotta You gotta go get it though since you know what you want you already know the idea that you want to accomplish so you know you want that so you just work backwards from there so the main goal is to become who we're meant to be like who why were we set on this planet for cool Thank you for watching, guys. This is kind of like intro video into Alivio Health. Oh, 222. Two, two. And uh, I forgot to put deodorant. Dude, fuck. I can smell myself. Oh, look. Oh, that's right, baby. Cool. And then that's it. I'm, let me pause this real quick. Actually, 